guys, welcome to Daryl and Tents, the quarantined edition. Tonight, I'm in my backyard. I can't go anywhere, right? I'm in my backyard in the Browning Bighorn eight-man tent. My wife and I will be spending the night there. Uh, on tap for dinner tonight, I'm having uh, calzones and a peanut butter chocolate pastry. So I'm going to start on the fire, then I'm going to load the gear into the tent. So let's get started. You know, the secret to fire making is to start with little little twigs and then add bigger pieces to it. The other secret is a good match. So the, the secret to building a fire is really not complicated. You start with very thin wood, and then you work your way up to thicker stuff as the flame is able to consume it. Well, the fire's going pretty good. Let me take you inside the tent and give you a tour. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of room here for, certainly for two people or even for four people with great big cots. We're, we're in great shape here. Notice the uh, Cabela's cot chairs that fit perfectly on the cots and uh, really make for uh, multi-use there where the cot serves also as the chair uh, without having to bring in an additional bag chair. Another little hack that works pretty well are these little uh, compartments here. Now this is actually a product uh, called Field Line Pro Series and uh, it's just a little, uh, it, it's a little belt pack uh, that I bought at a box store uh, and it has, uh, it's to hold a box of shotgun shells and then after you shoot it's a compartment to hold the casings. But what I find is it's a great spot to put your wallet, your glasses, your keys, uh, your, your headlamp, everything that you're looking for in the middle of the night, right here by your head where you know what it, where it is. It all fits right down there in that compartment. And this little, this little compartment here, where typically you would put a box of shotgun shells, works perfectly to hold some kind of a travel bark. Works out pretty well, and then you know exactly where your gear is at all times. This is the Browning Bighorn eight-man tent, and there's plenty of space for two people and or for four people in cots, and that's for four big adults. And notice there's just as much space on the other side of the tent as there is uh, on the cot side of the tent. So good size, good size tent for sure. Okay, well the fire's going well, and so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start dinner now. Because we're quarantined, we're all quarantined because of this uh, this virus, and so uh, certainly uh, certainly before I start dinner, a little uh, a little hand sanitizer is not a bad idea. And I'll tell you what we're gonna make tonight. It's uh, gonna be kind of fun. This is something that uh, you can do if you uh, you don't. It's not just a camping item. If you're around the house and you've got a fire pit. Uh, you've got children, you've got grandchildren coming over. The kids are going to love this. What I'm doing is I'm taking, this is a, 
This is a pie iron, but this is a rectangular one. Uh, I, I've used the square one in the past, even on videos, uh, but tonight I'm using, uh, I'm using the rectangular one, which has a great, uh, uh, a great use beyond what the, uh, beyond what the, uh, what the square ones are able to do. So what I've done is I've purchased from a box store a combination sausage pepperoni, and pepperoni pizza. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it out of the box. All right. Take it out of the cellophane. And then it's small enough I'm just going to fold it in half. Fold it in half. I'm going to take a little olive oil, spray on the inside of my pie irons, just so things don't stick. And I'm going to place the, uh, the pizza inside, and I'm going to trim it with a knife so that it fits perfectly inside there. Okay, so I've trimmed with a knife the pizza, folded it over, put the, uh, put the pie irons together, and in eight minutes, we're going to have a calzone. Oh, yeah. So take the lid off the, the container, the spark arrestor, and just find a good hot spot in those coals. And what I'm going to do is um, two minutes on each side for eight minutes and uh, I'll show you what we have okay so I've let that cook for two minutes on that side and then I'm just gonna flip it and I'm gonna do the same thing for two minutes on this side then I'm gonna keep doing that uh, at two minute intervals until I complete eight minutes and then I should be in good shape okay so two minutes on each side for a total I'm uh, rotating every two minutes for a total of eight minutes and then you have the ability, and, and obviously you can check it during the intervals and make sure that it's, uh, that it's uh, working the way that you have pulled it. So that, at the end of the eight minutes, oh, listen to that. At the end of the eight minutes, you pop it off. And look at that. You are looking at a beautiful calzone. And the kids are going to love it. Nice toasty brown, exactly the way that you want it. Very hot. Yep, very, very hot. And uh, and then you cut it and eat it. It's a calzone, man. That's what you got. Uh, for all of, what, a buck? And uh, and eight minutes. It's something the kids can do right around the, uh, right around the fire pit, right around the campfire. So I'm gonna eat this and then we'll work on dessert. Okay, so let me tell you what's next. Now it's time for a little dessert. And what I've got in store tonight is something, uh, something a little different. You know it's gotta be good when it starts with Nutella or hazelnut spread, coupled with Jif creamy peanut butter. And I'm placing these with my customary croissant dough. All right. So let me I'm going to open let me open up the dough and we'll get started here. And again, you know the kids are going to love this. So what I like to do is start by greasing up with a little oil, olive oil. Spray up the pie iron so nothing sticks. And then I like to put them into the into the fire pit so that they can actually start warming up. The cast iron will hold its heat well once it's hot, but you just have to start by getting it warm. So I'm going to let these heat up and take out my knife.
I take the croissant dough. I prefer you can buy sheet dough uh, that's not perforated uh, unless you're in the middle of a global pandemic and then you take what you can get. And so I'm working with uh, perforated croissants, uh, which also work, but, but the perforation is where, uh, is where you typically will have, uh, will have issue with it bleeding over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this about the width of the pie iron so that then I can just uh, butter it up and fold it over and put it in the pie iron. So I'm starting by cutting the, the dough all the way through. Perfect. All right. And then I want you to see, I want you to see this as I do this. So we'll start with the Nutella. Take the knife, and I'm going to butter half of it, but I want to leave about a half inch all the way around so that it, uh, so that it won't bleed over. All right? So I'm leaving a border of about a half an inch all the way around. Can you see how I'm doing that? So we've got the hazelnut Nutella. And then we take the Jif Creamy. Oh yeah. We do the Jif Creamy and we do the exact same thing and we mirror it to the other side, leaving again about a half inch border all the way around. Perfect, okay? And then I'm simply gonna fold that over, marry those together, Pinch the seams like your grandma used to do back when grandma's cooked. <laughs> and then we take the hot pie iron. Oh yeah, look at that. We take the hot pie iron. And we stick that bad boy. And you can hear it immediately begin to sizzle because the pie iron's warm. And you're going to put this in here for maybe 30 seconds on each side for two minutes, okay? 30 seconds on each side for two minutes. So after 30 seconds, I'm going to rotate it for another 30 seconds, and then I'm going to rotate it. And in about two minutes when I take it out, you're going to love it. Okay, so after two minutes, we're going to take that out, and we pop that out. Oh, yeah. Ready? And look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, it's very toasty. And what I'm going to do is I, a, a lot of times when I do work with the pie irons and the croissants and whatever's inside there, then I take whipped butter icing and I put it over the top, but there's no need here because you've got peanut butter and you've got Nutella. You've got a, you've got a lot going on there. But I am going to take a knife and I'm going to cut this in half and share it with my bride. But I want you to see this. Hold on. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. You've got the peanut butter and you've got the Nutella, and they are just blending together, and it's a, it's going to be a party in your mouth. You're looking at a party in your mouth, people. That's what you've got going on. Here. Why don't you take a look at this? Croissant dough, peanut butter, and Nutella.
little warm. Unbelievable. Okay, as the sun's going down, I'm going to get this fire churning and uh, kick back, sit by, sit by the fire, and uh, drink a cup of coffee. Well, it's about 9 o'clock at night. The uh, fire's starting to go down, and as it turns out, I am too. It's approaching 10 o'clock. I got the spark arrestor on the fire. I think I'm heading to bed. I'm heading into the tent, and I'll talk to you when I get in there. When I set the tent up tonight, I set it up with some Christmas lights on it. It uh, actually creates a nice little ambiance inside the tent as you're getting ready for bed. Tonight is just a test run. I brought my Mr. Heater Tough Buddy uh, as a test run, and I've got it hooked up tonight. I've never hooked it up to the propane, but I've got it hooked up to a propane bottle got taken out here outside the tent and I'm gonna open up the gas line and uh, take it for a test run. Now I do have inside the tent I do have a carbon monoxide detector so let's crank this up and see what we can do Prime it a little bit. Well, I've set it between low and medium, and uh, we'll let that get orange and uh, see what it does in here. Well, it is 51 degrees outside, and I've had the heater on for about an hour in here. And I've got a thermometer in here shows 65 degrees, so that's quite impressive. So I am going to call it a night. I'm in the sleeping bag, uh, rated for minus 25. Uh, I, I should be okay. Um, so I hope you get a good night's sleep. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. Hey, good morning. It's 5:30, and uh, somebody forgot a stocking cap. 41 degrees and uh, yeah I'm going to turn this propane heater on and see if I can't warm things up a little bit and then dive back down in the sleeping bag and do a little more sleeping very nice it's 6.30 the alarm just went off and I'm going to grab a cup of coffee and see if I can catch a sunrise I'll get up and get around and See what the temperature is here in here now.
Well, I put a thermometer on the wall. It's uh, 52 degrees inside. 40, 40 degrees, right at 40 outside. It was 41 a little earlier, 40 degrees outside. So, yeah, it's a good, uh, good 11, 12 degrees warmer inside than it is outside. A little heater buddy work. Let's go see the sun. What a beautiful morning. You can hear the birds singing, letting us know that they're up and about this morning. Sun's getting ready to pop up over that horizon. Something about a sunrise. Just a, a fresh start and a new beginning. I love that. Well, listen, thanks for spending the night with me, even though we've been six feet apart and we've been quarantined on the same backyard. Good to have you join me. If you like the video, click the like button. If you, uh, if you want to subscribe, you can do it right there on the page. It'd be great to have you along every time that I take, a, take an excursion. I'd love to have you join me. And if you click the bell right next to the subscribe button, then uh, you'll get a notification every time that I post a new video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We're going to be okay. God bless.